This is the Aurora PJ90. It's a budget class, ultra short throw projector from Nexigo. Also known as a laser TV, these projectors use a very wide angle lens, allowing you to project a really large image into a very short distance. For example, I'm able to project this 100 inch diagonal image with the projector being only 11 inches away from my wall. For me, this device has replaced my main TV and I won't be going back to a TV anytime soon, but it's not for everyone, and hopefully by the end of this video, we will weigh all of the pros and cons to decide whether or not if it's for you. First off, this projector comes well packaged in a really big box. The device itself measures around 18 by 13 by 4 inches. The box includes the projector unit, quick start guide and user manual, cleaning cloth, remote with batteries, and a power cable. The front of the unit doubles as a sound bar. On the back, we have a USB port, two HDMI inputs, an audio output jack, AVN, and an ethernet port. Here's the bottom of the unit, and as you can see, we have four female threaded screw holes for things like ceiling mount hardware. On the top of the unit, we can see a wide angle projector lens. This also has motion detection that will shut the projection off as a safety feature to ensure that it won't damage anyone's eyes if they look directly into the laser beam. On both sides of the unit, we have these dials that allow us to raise or lower the front feet of the projector to help level out the unit. And also, as you can see here, we have another USB port, but only on the right side. That is, if you're facing the speaker side of the projector. After hanging my projector screen, I powered the projector on for the first time and had to spend around 10 minutes messing around with the placement of the projector and dialing the image to fit my screen. And on first sight, I was extremely impressed by both the image quality and the massive picture size. The projector can supposedly go up to 150 inches with a 4K image, however, I don't have a wall in my house that can take a projected image that large, so I had to settle for a mere 100 inches. In a really bright room, it's viewable, but the darker the room is, the better the picture quality. Luckily, my living room is pretty dim overall most of the time, and we do most of our TV watching at night anyway, so keeping the room dark enough was no problem for us at all. Our normal viewing experience is having one table lamp on and the kitchen lights coming in from the other room, and this was still plenty dark enough to get a great viewing experience. And when we want the total theater viewing experience, we just turn off all of the lights at night and we're good to go. As I mentioned, our living room is pretty dim, but not at all designed with a home theater setup in mind. Also, this projector spits out 2,500 ANSI lumens. To give you an idea of just how powerful that is, here's a portable projector that I reviewed a few months ago. It has 120 ANSI lumens, and this is what the two look like side by side under the same lighting conditions on the same screen. I guess I should also mention that my screen is gray and homemade. I'll talk more about that later. The audio on this device sounds great. I have a sound bar that I was using on my TV, and the built-in speakers of the projector sounds every bit as good. So I should talk about a really major bias when it comes to this review because I do want to keep myself honest here, and that is, I'm blown away by the picture quality of this projector, but this is my only frame of reference for an ultra short throw laser projector, meaning I've never seen any others in person. As far as it goes, if it's any better or worse than any other laser TVs on the market, unfortunately, I can't make that distinction because I just don't know. I can say that all of these recorded shots of the image do not do it justice, and it's something that you would have to see in person to truly appreciate. However, I'm going to link a video that a channel called The Hookup did, wherein he did an exhaustive comparison between nine UST laser projectors, and he came to the conclusion that the best value under $2,500 projector is indeed the Nexigo Aurora. I highly recommend watching that video before making a purchase of a laser projector. It's full of really useful information, and it's a really deep dive. Now I'm going to talk about one thing that I don't like about this projector, and it's the one thing that keeps me from giving this projector an absolute perfect score, and that is the built-in Android player of the device. Actually, I have a few complaints, but they all fall under the same umbrella of the device's operating system. So I've used the Xiaomi Mi Box for years now. It's my main TV box, and I've gotten spoiled by how a TV box OS should work. 
I was hoping this device's Android TV experience would be similar, but sadly, it's lacking in a few areas. First of all, it's a customized Android TV OS lacking Google services and Play Store. And some apps just won't work. A big one that springs to mind is Paramount Plus. The OS also lacks the ability to customize and reposition apps on your home screen, and there's no shortcut system that I could find at all, which makes everyday use just a little bit annoying. And the absolute worst user experience with this device is the lack of voice search through the remote. Like I said, I've gotten spoiled through the Mi Box, and this device does offer the ability to control some of its features via Alexa, but it's not the same experience and far more convoluted than just being able to speak into the remote with a quick voice search. And yeah, I'm going to just plug my Mi Box into an HDMI port of the projector and solve this minor annoyance, but I was looking forward to having fewer devices running with one taking care of everything. But I don't want to sound too critical because absolutely everything else about this projector is a solid win. So I love this projector and I'm not going back to a TV anytime soon. However, there are some pros and cons to weigh and it may not be everyone's cup of tea. If you want the true cinematic experience on a budget, then this is definitely the way to go. You will be hard pressed to find a larger image of this quality at a lower price. However, when pitted against a normal TV, there are several things that you should consider if and when you make that change. First and foremost is the setup. With a TV, you just turn it on and you're done. But with this projector, you have to have a flat wall to project against. And if you do, your setup should be somewhat straightforward. But for me, my largest wall is an accent wall on which I had to hang a screen, then calibrate the projection to the screen. Nothing about it was really difficult, and Nexigo has made keystone correction relatively easy, but expect to dust off your math and some simple geometry skills. Another thing you should be aware of is that because this is such a short throw projector, any tiny physical movement of the projector itself will throw the image out of center a lot. This also counts for imperfections in your screen. The recommended screens for these projectors can be pretty expensive, some of them even more expensive than TVs. And they're probably worth it. But me, personally, I opted to build my own screen, and there are some things that I could have done better. Armed with the knowledge of the mistakes that I made when building my first screen, I plan on building screen 2.0, and when I do that, I will make an instructional video showing how to build your own screen for around 50 to 70 bucks. But be aware that if you use cheap wood for the framing with slight warps and other imperfections like I did on screen 1.0, it will be very noticeable in the final image. Having warpage in your screen and a section of the screen that is off by more than a centimeter or so from one side to the other will create a lot of distortion in the image. Just be aware. I also use cloth stretched across a frame with no backing, which was a mistake on my part. Without backing, air can get behind the screen and every little change in air, like opening doors, fans from the heater and other things like that, can cause fabric to wave and warp the image temporarily. Another thing that you should be aware of is that after you calibrate the projector to the screen, get everything set up where you want. If you have little kids or a dog that bumps into your stand, you're right back to square one. I wanted to ceiling mount the projector because of this reason, but as it turns out, that didn't work out for me either because the projector sets near a furnace and the heat in the room rising to the ceiling was causing the projector to overheat. The projector's fans were kicking into overdrive almost immediately in my situation. I think under most circumstances, ceiling mounting would have been fine, just not for me in my house near that furnace. Also, even though the image from this projector looks fantastic and it's even usable in a fairly bright room, you will still not get the vibrance, contrast, and detail that you would get from an OLED TV, so no one should realistically expect that. As for my final thoughts of the Nexigo Aurora projector, overall, I love it. I'm gonna give it a solid nine out of 10. I would give it a perfect score if the built-in Android player were better. That aside, the cinematic experience is superb, but keep in mind, this is coming from the perspective of a movie buff and not a gamer. But I hope I've given you enough information to come to your own conclusion, whether or not the Nexigo Aurora is the right purchase for you or not. Thank you for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.